And we are, as a people, inherently and historically Wake up. opposed to the secret societies, the se secret oaths, and the secret proceedings. The show that asks questions about why we don't ask questions. What the hell is going on? This is Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. Welcome to Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. These are going to be Conspiracy Queries, and I'm Alan Park, and I'll be asking them. Thanks for tuning us back in. I am very uh, happy to be getting some nice feedback from our listeners, and uh, your comments are always welcome. And I also welcome the negative comments, which there haven't been any really that I've been able to source. So thanks for that. Maybe the people that are angry about the show just don't want to talk to me. Who knows? Uh, but thanks for listening. You are listening, and you are probably also just as curious about these things as I am. My guest today is Solaris Blue Raven. She has uh, an incredible website and is a researcher, and we will, uh, we will get to her shortly. Uh, but before we do that, we have to wonder, how much time do we have left before we turn into... Horrendous Mutants. And of course, I'm talking about, uh, as the sound would indicate, the Fukushima meltdown. You know, I was having a conversation the other day with somebody about the spent cooling rods that sit precariously atop a badly damaged 10-story structure, just basically tottering there on the edge of the volcanic rim that is Japan. And um, he didn't really know what was going on. And I, not, a, not an unintelligent man, just kind of blew my mind a little bit that uh, he hadn't heard of it. But the cooling rods, of which there are something like 1,330 of them, and they need to be in water forever, basically. And that water is not supposed to get out. But uh, unfortunately, I don't know the design uh, of the building specifically, but I do know that the cooling rods are up on the, uh, what you would call the 10th floor of the building in a pool. And uh, unfortunately, uh, floors 9 through 0 are in horrendous shape and uh, ready to collapse. Uh, a lot of people are afraid that the next earthquake, if it happens, and you know it will because they do happen, obviously it happened in the first place, uh, that earthquake will send those 1,300 fuel rods a tumbling, and uh, we will be in a very bad situation. And then there are other people that say, yeah, we don't even need an earthquake for that. This structure of this building is so ready to collapse that we don't even need to wait for an earthquake in Japan again for that to happen. And that is where I think a lot of the world's resources should be allocated not another fake war. Are we not tired of those? Put your hand up if you're tired of the fake wars based on the fake reasons called for by a minority of minorities. It's really enough, I think. We just have to put our focus on, on cleaning this stuff up. And just to say, yeah, but it's really difficult and it's really hard. Well, that hasn't stopped us from trying to intervene in the uh, Middle East. And obviously that's not getting us anywhere. Uh, but we really need to solve the problem that is the horrendousness of Fukushima. I'm turning now to a, ho a horrible little article just to bring you up to speed that uh, on ecosidealert.com, the Fukushima leak is much worse than we were led to believe. Much worse. A nuclear e expert has told the BBC that he believes the current water leaks are much worse than authorities have stated. Meisy Schneider is an independent consultant who has previously advised the French and German governments. He says water is leaking out all over the site and there are no accurate figures for radiation levels. Meanwhile, the chairman of Japan's nuclear authority, TEPCO, said that he feared there would be further leaks. Thanks for that. The ongoing problems at the Fukushima plant increased in recent days when the Tokyo Electric Power Company admitted that around 300 tons of Highly radioactive water had leaked from a storage tank on the site. The Japanese nuclear energy watchdog, 
which is probably a toothless watch jog, raised the incident level from one to three on the international scale that measures the severity of atomic incidents. Really, one to three. It doesn't sound all that alarming. Um, anyhow, Micey Schneider says, or is it Michael? It's Michael. Sorry, it's a weird spelling for me. M-Y-C-L-E. Michael Schneider says... It is leaking out from the basements. It is leaking out from the cracks all over the place. That's official science talk right there. All over the place. Run for your lives, everybody. But uh, some nuclear experts are concerned the problem is a good deal worse than either TEPCO or the Japanese government are willing to admit. Yeah, it's incredible. Anyway, that's where we're at with uh, that situation. And then this news uh, comes in recently that... um, Another nuclear expert. Didn't you wish you were a nuclear expert before this happened? Man, you would have had so many gigs before this horrible accident. A nuclear expert says, I believe Fukushima fuel melted through at some reactors. Gone beyond building and now it's in bedrock? That's the uh, the quote. It's in the bedrock. Yeah, this is a Dean Wilkie interview. Dean Wilkie, a nuclear reactor operations management construction and plant engineering at a U.S. Department of Energy in Idaho. Uh, the host, Amy Brown, of the program he was on said, it's melting down into the earth. And Wilkie said, melting down into the bottom of the facility. Directly below the reactor vessel is the pedestal area, which has concrete And the fuel then starts to abate the concrete. That's where the argument is among the reactor physicists and all the safety people. How far has it melted? Well, it's gone beyond the building and now it's in the bedrock. Bedrock, building, no difference there, right? That's just the essence of the earth that we all share. And then from September 23rd, Another study shows that high concentrations of Fukushima radioactive material will reach the west coast of North America, the entire coast, to be affected from Alaska to Mexico and can negatively affect human life for decades, which should raise concern, but not enough concern to not put the Olympics in Japan. I guess I'm going to, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, you know, what nuclear powered athletes are going to be setting new records at what kind of levels, what kind of land speed and skating and that kind of thing they're going to be able to do. Very grim stuff in Fukushima, folks. Uh, write your congressman, call your senator. All right, we're going to move on to our interview. <laughs> My guest today can probably kick your butt because she is a certified black belt and instructor. That, however, is not why I brought her on the show today. Those are merely two of her many talents. Solaris Blue Raven uh, has a professional background in surveillance, and she is a researcher, which can be a lot easier to do when you are clairvoyant, which she also is. She is also an MT healer, Wiccan HPS, and I love this one, Systems Buster for MKUltra related projects. If you don't know what MKUltra is, MKUltra was a government brain infiltration technique almost always used for nefarious purposes. And I only say almost because I'm sure maybe they tried to divine a fantastic cookie recipe once and it didn't happen. But it's almost always bad news. And the MK stands for mind control and was very much a thing back in the day. And right after it was claimed to be no longer used, it has been used extensively ever since. Just like remote viewing and Operation Mockingbird. Solaris has an extensive background in the paranormal and is, in fact, a metaphysical sciences practitioner. And I welcome her to Conspiracy Query. Solaris, did I get everything covered? You sure did. Thank you, Alan, for having me on. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming on. Now, you also claim uh, on your homepage that you are uh, an Ascended Watcher, the other MIB, and Black Ops Baby. What do those mean? Well, basically, I'm the one that um, 
I guess the Ascended Watcher is more of me on a multidimensional level of consciousness that, that rises beyond the false programs of society. Which, And the uh, MIB baby, basically I was inducted into a covert program back in 2004, which dealt with synthetic telepathy and, and a lot of different um, programs, um, like pattern recognition and, and colors, numbers, codes, and things like that. So I'm kind of a little hybrid MIB baby um, to some extent. Okay. Yeah, I've been through a lot of different programs. I've been through the system, and I've been through the um, the type of synthetic telepathy, psychotronic programming they use. How how were you? This would obviously been at, at a much younger stage in your life. Right. Yes, it was in two thousand and four, actually. So it's been about ten years now. Um, so yeah, I, I had everything going for me in my life when they pulled me into this this assault project. And and you're right about the MK Ultra. Um, it's never ever stopped. What it is now is psychotronic programming, and a lot of the psychotronic programming also allows for synthetic telepathy. Now that can be either with a machine based communication system or a live handler agent, which is what I had, and that is done through satellite tagging systems. So people can actually stay in their homes, not go anywhere, and still be hit with a satellite technology that will tag their electromagnetic field, open up a communication system, and they will be targeted, um, you name it, um, interrogated, and programmed. All right. Now, before we get into uh, some of the aspects that you discuss on your website, I want to uh, check with you uh, how much of the um, metaphysical work and uh, your, your Wiccan, is that right? Mm-hmm. And yes, I am. all of that uh, part of your life, that uh, the fabric of your life, how much of that was going on before uh, your your uh, invasion in two thousand and four, okay. like, were you already practicing these things, or was that the was that the the um, you know the ticker that pushed you over the edge and into that field? Right. No. No. Actually, not at all. I was always on the path of spirit, and actually, I've studied a lot of different religions. I've had a lot of initiations in a lot of different areas. Uh, Wiccan is one of my benchmarks, um, but a lot of other things as well. So I was doing DNA DNA activation and teaching um, holistic healing, doing healing sessions on people. So I wasn't just about um, you know not being prepared for that. I certainly was spiritually prepared, and I was very ascended in consciousness when they tagged me with their communication system. And I have to tell you, their technology and their communication system is very dark. It's very negative. Uh, it's not positive in any form or design, and it's not designed to allow you to spiritually grow or evolve. It's it's more the opposite. Wow, that sounds like my cable package. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so what what exactly was it then that uh, opened you up or or targeted you for their uh, intervention into your life, into your brain, your mind? Right. Well, I believe it was where I was at spiritually when I was first tagged. I mean, I have a Merkaba signal naturally due to meditation and, and the type of work that I was doing on a, on a high level of spirit. So I know that I was at the right vibratory rate and space and consciousness to be able to be tagged by this communication system. But I can tell you that I sent my book to someone who I profile in the music industry, and within a week my home was under surveillance, and my computer was tagged, my phone was tagged, and I was tagged. So basically the people that I sent my book to were the responsible parties for the induction. Wow. Okay, and uh, that must have been uh, something that took you a while to extract yourself from. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, I was married at the time, so it took my life out. I mean, literally, I was in a divorce within four months' time because my husband had no idea what was happening to me. I was in constant um, synthetic telepathy communication with my handler live feed in real time, so I was not verbally communicating much. And when I was, it wasn't really, um, you know, I literally wasn't there. I mean, I was completely being taken over by the remote program. So, yeah, within four months' time, that took my life out in my marriage. And what what kind of thing would you be enticed to do or, or controlled into doing while in the control of this program? Well, in control, um, the handler was literally programming me with visuals, dialogue, pattern recognition, numbers, codes. I wasn't complying with anything they wanted me to be. Um, in other words, they would try to say my name was somebody else and this is who you are and, and I would fight them telepathically in my mind and say, no, that's not my name. And this would go on for hours and hours, 24-7. So literally, the programs they tried to use against me to control and manipulate me were backfiring because I was fighting it. I was not complying but at the same time, I was trying to get away from it and by leaving my house was probably the worst thing I could have done because I, I actually left my house so I could try to find peace of mind and that, of course, just made it worse because they want you isolated in a Away from your family so they can program you. Wow. Okay. And then you were able eventually to uh, break free and you've been happily free of that since. Are you able to uh, help others or h- how are you able to recognize in others that they're going through the same type of thing? Well, usually the symptoms. Um, usually it's, it's, well, they say they're hearing voices, and that's not true at all. It's a mock radio communication system signal. It's a signal. And it is, um, it is a 
communication, but it's not what people think it is, like the voices, you know, like the psychosis or schizophrenic behavior. I mean, this is literally a manufactured communication system with a live handler and sometimes an auto-response a computer system that will actually assist in programming. But I can tell you that my work right now and my research is based on having to roll up my sleeves and decode the data, which I did. And I actually found one of the developers to the technology, which is psychotronic programming, and I talked with him out in Vegas. And so basically I have books out on the subject, and insofar as helping people, that's my best way to do it. I don't work with them one-on-one. All I do is put my work out, and I have suggestions for them to override the technology. But it is a torturous avenue, and it's not something people can break away from very easily. All right. Well, you raise an interesting topic with voices in the head. I I had been under the impression that, uh, in fact, there were people uh, going back uh, many years, decades, in fact, that have complained of such a thing. Is it not possible there are also people that uh, have some kind of mental disorder that, that makes them hear voices in their head or think they hear voices mm-hmm. in their head? Right. I think that there are certain levels of consciousness where um, some, what I call astral shattering, I mean, there are some times when people can actually hear on a multidimensional level where they're probably might be hearing disembodied spirits. And I'm not discounting that at all. That is a possibility. But I know that there is a technology out there that targets the, the, the person with a communication system that kind of mirrors that. So there are different levels to it for certain. Okay, so they're, they might have taken, uh, derived the technology from a, a sort of a semi-occasional phenomenon, decided to develop something, and then it all gets put under the umbrella of, oh, that guy's crazy. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And you have to realize, too, that they'll tag your electromagnetic field, your neural circuitry, your brainwave activity, and also your psychic centers. So when they do this, they can interface it onto their communication system and actually modulate it and, and kind of tweak it a little bit and then create a playback with whatever dialogue they want. So they can manufacture a quote-unquote ghost, spirit, ancestor, relative, um, you name it, anything. So this is some form of projection, though, right? Obviously, this is some kind of it's a radio signal. Uh, radio signal. And, it's a mock and radio signal. Are, are we yeah. talking about HARP or what are we, what are, what it's is it coming HARP. from? It's not HARP. No, it's a satellite-driven technology that's based on underground supercomputer artificial intelligence. Oh, okay. Um, HARP does influence the masses, but not that way. Right. Okay, so this underground technology, are, is this under... Uh, Denver Airport or something, or some subterranean well, I area? I wouldn't say it's under Denver Airport, but there are locations throughout the United States and mostly military and um, black budget military programs that are across the globe, but also in the United States that actually have the artificial intelligence, yeah. Okay. Well, with voices in the head, um, guess what just happened last week? There was the Navy Yard shooter, and immediately um, the reports came in that, uh, you know, it was the same old, same old. We got to get the guns out of everybody's hands, etc. But as I looked into it, one of the reports that this had happened was actually printed the day before it happened um, and, and released in, uh, in Canada and in other uh, areas of the United States uh, the entire event. But on the 15th, when the event took place on the 16th. So that was my first red flag that this might be some kind of false flag or something screwy going on. And then uh, we we now hear that the uh, supposed shooter, uh, Alexis, uh, had already contacted authorities saying, uh, hey, I'm I'm hearing these voices and I don't know what's going on and I need some help. And, um, you know, they just want to lean back on, well, he's got too much access to firearms. He's a video game junkie. So there's your problem there. But do you have any uh, insight on the Navy Yard shootings with that uh, in that respect? Oh, sure. Yeah. As soon as I saw the description of what he was going through, I said, oh, he's psychotronically programmed and targeted and gang stalked. There's no doubt about it. That was planned. And he was a target for, for interrogation. And basically, he just lost it. But he was trying to get help. I mean, he was literally telling people what was happening. He didn't understand it. But he definitely knew something was wrong. And that's not, um, oh, he was on drugs. Well, if he was on drugs, it's probably because he had symptoms which displayed that schizophrenic perhaps but literally he was being psychotronically programmed and if i if i understand correctly he was contracted with the military as well so you're dealing with somebody who's been targeted who was used as a target and wound up basically taking the fall and it's unfortunate that whole scenario and it, and it should have never happened and i'll tell you why it happens is because covert intelligence areas and black budget literally misuse technology to target individuals into either committing suicide, committing crimes. If they're like me, they become whistleblowers. They say um, they they know how to break down the technology and expose it. But it's a bad situation. It's one of the worst things we have going on in in this country and in in the whole world right now is the misuse of technology, especially psychotronic weapons. 
Yeah. Oh, so let me ask you this. Why would they do that to him? And what benefit are they? I always have to ask who's benefiting. So mm-hmm. the fact that they're able to turn on a toy soldier to go bonkers, uh, fine. But what does that bring them? What gain are they experiencing? Is it just a field test for some uh, aspect of their technology that they want to take out for a test drive? Or what, what are they gaining out of it? Right. Well, I used to think they do it because they can, and a lot of the times they do. But at the same time, I think it might have something to do with gun control and also creating more more um, scenarios where they're signing off on all these executive orders based on control and manipulation due to an event such as that, which was pretty much staged. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, earlier you mentioned um, that you were you were uh, becoming aware of the false premises of society. What are the false premises of society? Well, basically everything is a program, and you have to look at it as such. I mean, after I went through the interrogation system and the, and the synthetic telepathy with my life handler, it became very clear to me how everything is based on a false reality. And a lot of what people are subjected to from day to day has been censored, and, and it's basically a lie. I mean, they go to school, they get educated, and the information and, and the teachings that they're getting subjected to aren't even you know valid or accurate. So we're dealing with a whole de-evolution of society because it's not based on truth. So what we have to do as a society is break down all the false realities and false matrices and actually ascend out of that through higher consciousness. And that's that's really clear to me right now, especially with people watching so much television and being totally corralled into the false collective, especially here in America, where everything is just like the people are so sheeple oriented. Um, not everybody, but there's a, there's a great majority that have no clue. And that's a very dangerous thing. When you have people who are disempowered through ignorance, that's huge. And something needs to be done about it because otherwise they become more victimized by the situation, the false realities and the covert programs. And then it's just a downward spiral to nowhere. Yeah. I, I'd seen a clip. I don't know if you had seen this uh, on the web uh, recently where uh, uh, Conan O'Brien, who's a late night show host, uh, he, he's, his team stitched together a series of clips from all over America uh, with the local news readers uh, spewing the exact same phrase. Uh, and, you know, it was clearly written by one person at Operation Central somewhere. And then everybody is uh, reading the same clip. And it's coming at the, the local markets as though it were news. And, uh, of course, when you put all of it together and it's the same thing over and over again, it becomes very funny to watch. And the thing that I took from that was... It's amazing because he pulled the, uh, you know, he pulled the black curtain away from the magician and people are laughing at this, but they're also realizing, um, hey, yeah, why are we being fed the same nonsense across the board? Like, where is the originality and the new information, you know, regarding the different markets? But no one seemed to care about that. They just thought it was really funny that this stuff was being repeated over and over. And, Hmm. um, yeah, it it doesn't seem to uh, help in the way of waking people up sometimes. I find that a bit discouraging. Yeah, I agree too. Well, it's kind of like if they're not awakened now, I don't know what's gonna what it's going to take. I mean, usually it takes a crisis. And we've had plenty of those this past year. I mean, every time I turn around, there's some kind of an agenda or there's some kind of a shooting or even here in Colorado, I mean, we had this quote unquote flood. Now, yeah, technically it could be a hundred year flood, but I'll tell you what, I know chemtrails and I see them all the time. And I will tell you this, the chemtrails were not there after the flood for a very long time. And now they just started back up again. So um, those that is weather modification and any way you look at it and I I personally feel that there was some kind of a, a global manufactured sabotage involved in that whole flood. So that's just my own take on it. I don't think it was natural at all. Right. And now it's got that combination of uh, fracking liquids mm-hmm. swishing around with the waters and making things even worse. I hope uh, yeah. I hope people are able to, to get themselves out of that. L- yeah. All right. Let's, let's move on to um, uh, an interesting aspect you brought up uh, in our uh, – our email exchange prior to the show was about parallel bleed through. Now, Mm -hmm. are you talking about parallel universes or parallel existences? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Crack that open for me. Okay. Well, basically we, I mean, I'm sure you're aware of this, but what we, what we think we manifest on this dimension and also on other dimensions simultaneously. So what we do here will actually affect other universes on a higher level of consciousness. And a lot of that, um, if there's a lot of chaos and there's a lot of mass collectives that are, that are distributing a lot of chaos, chaotic energy through the ethers and through different dimensional spaces, then that can create a bleed through effect, which can be very negative. Um, you can get a lot of negative entities. You can get a lot of, uh, chaotic, 
behavioral patterns, which, which is pretty much what we're seeing here today insofar as the way people are operating from day to day. And even the drive of these people, um, these cabals that are, that are interested in misusing technology, I mean, they're driven by entities. They're driven by disembodied spirits. They're um, kind of like vacuums. They have no higher consciousness connection. And I think a lot of that has to do with what people have been putting out for centuries. And, I mean, if you think it doesn't come back and hit you in the butt, it will. So, I mean, and that on a collective level, you have to think about the power and the consciousness involved. So it, it really does bleed through on other dimensions and alternate realities, also with other species. So a lot of extraterrestrial sightings, and I won't go too far with that, but a lot of that can be a bleed through effect from another dimension. Wow. Okay. And and when you say a bleed through, so you're getting like an, an essence or something of what's going on in a different dimension manifesting itself, usually negatively in this one. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like a screen within a screen. Yeah. They're like so close, they start to mesh and bleed through. You know, if you take two fabrics together that really, really close with a, with a certain har- harmonic or signature, it's usually about vibration. And they would kind of, um, through, through more of an osmosis, kind of ping back and forth. And then the other, the other dimension will connect in with the um, entities or whatever else is there that will affect the psyche of the people on the planet. Okay, so that, that's uh, s- stating that there are people or, or entities or awarenesses on other dimensions. Oh, absolutely. Through. Yeah. So. Are, what are we doing here uh, on Earth that may be bleeding through into their dimensions? Like, for example, if you organize uh, trying to fool everyone on the planet with a massive destruction, traumatic inducing event such as a 9-11 um, and buildings do collapse. And we, I don't want to get into 9-11 with you now, but you know all the different theories and and people don't believe it was as presented but when at the end of the day those buildings aren't there anymore and people were killed that's not debatable and so when we do something like that or we allow our supposed uh, leaders or uh, or uh, elected representatives supposedly to do something like that does that does that negatively bleed through on another uh conscious level and are we going to have to pay some kind of price for that oh absolutely yeah it's a boomerang effect yeah literally it will it will only go so far in vibratory rate and consciousness because you have to you have to understand too that the universe is a very intelligent design and and a lot of the things that they're doing is is really low primordial unevolved activity so that really doesn't ascend the only thing that ascends is light consciousness i mean that's something that will keep moving through the universe and other multiverses so what's going to happen with these guys is they're going to create so much um I don't want to say it's dark matter, but just basically so much gravity towards their own behavior and, and actions that it literally becomes more of a well, a gravity well, and just kind of consumes them. It's almost like an implosion. So they will have to deal with that, and they have to deal with it on this planet. They can't do it elsewhere. And I will tell you this, if they don't get if they don't get with the program now, if they don't stop what they're doing now, then they're going extinct. Um, the people that were involved in these programs, every single one of them, there's no evolution, there's no ascension, there's no, hey, we'll work it out in another lifetime or another planet, no way. If they're going extinct. And I want them to understand that because that's huge. Yeah, that that is huge. So the people that are, I, I hate to use this term, but running things here, mm-hmm. who are they? A lot of them are the cabals, and a lot of and if you talk to certain people, they'll tell you they're extraterrestrials and they're reptiles and this and that. I don't subscribe to that. I mean, yeah, they might be connected to some kind of an unevolved species, but I'll tell you, they're just usually the cabals, which are, are basically banksters, um, the people who have been in charge for a very long time, calling the shots behind the scenes that we all know. They're high-profile names, and, and they're little minions that have been running the show on this planet. So that's the biggest thing. And these are the people that have literally, for some reason or another, have really, really... Um, kind of hypnotized the masses to a point where everybody's just been in, in a different space and had no idea the deception was going on, but they've really awakened to the fact that there is a lot of deception happening. And not only has it been happening on this timeline in the moment, it's been going on for a very long time. So it needs to stop. But those people involved, those parties who are trying to bring everybody down to de-evolve will definitely go extinct. But we don't have to be participating with that. And we can break orbit with it through higher consciousness. And that's why I always say the key to this is is higher consciousness. That's how we're going to be able to break orbit with this patterning. All right. And how, how does one develop a higher consciousness? And I'm going to guess right away you're going to say, at the very least, meditate. Well, meditate to start, you know, that's a great, um, that's a great beginning point for some, for some people, they don't like to meditate. And I will say martial arts is another avenue that's fantastic. Um, spiritual um, evolution, reading, um, things that are enlightening, um, going, going through your higher self, over self, superconscious, or accessing the higher self 
And you do that through meditation, but you also do that through knowledge, through reading, and using discernment in daily affairs. In other words, follow your intuition and see what feels correct and what doesn't. Because chances are your gut instinct will will tell you point blank. It'll be a benchmark of truth. Okay, let me valid, let me stop you there though, because here's here's where I disagree with that. And uh, mm-hmm. if that's okay, with all due sure. respect, yeah. I, I disagree with that to a certain degree because. When you're talking about the false premises of society and and making uh, claims of, um, you know, technological infiltration into your brain and mind control and 9-11 and all these things, so many people in society will say that you are crazy, you're a, a nutter, and you're out of your mind. And that's their truth to them. They really believe that. Now, it's probably been programmed into them. Mm-hmm. They're not awake enough, but that is their own truth. So... Is that just the fact that they haven't gotten themselves to a place where they're better able to see? Because if you tell a person, just go with your gut and and, and really uh, you know believe in yourself and the inside, they're going to believe the programming that's there. Well, I think a lot of the times when they go with their quote-unquote gut, those people, I don't think they are. I think the problem is they're going with the motions of a program, and they're pretty much you know accommodating the illusion of the false collective. So there's nothing people can do that will change where they're at. If they want to grow and evolve, if they want to learn, if they want to understand, they will have a driving mechanism to do so. If they don't, then they're just going to live in that la-la land, and yeah, they'll, they'll call everybody quacky, but I'll tell you what, when push comes to shove and the final end of ends, they're the ones that are going to be left in the dust. And I hope that they understand that because this is technology that they need to research. If they don't understand something, if they want to poo-hoo it, they need to roll up their sleeves. They need to study it. They need to, they need to understand that there's things like this that exist. And then they can try to, you know, debunk it. But, but, you know, do the work first and then try to debunk it. I've always told people, you know, I dare you to try to debunk the anomaly signatures I have because I've had them for 10 years and they've been measured by several scientists. So, you know, just to give you an idea. What, what kind of measurements are we, are we talking about? We're talking about different devices that have been used on my electromagnetic field to pick up on the anomaly signature that I've had since 2004, which literally bounces to music on radios, interacts with the wind, um, does all sorts of strange things. And it's also my, I have a lot of um, implants around my skull, which actually interconnect with the synthetic telepathy program, which I was subjected to back in 2004. So, and I would say that the majority of people on this planet in one form or another probably have some form of implant, whether they realize it or not, and whether it's active or not. Um, so that's another thing people need to look at, too. I also think that, you know, there's a lot of um, implants based on RFID chips. Those are, those are like, those are nothing compared to the stuff they can do nowadays. I mean, they don't need to have a, a chip. So they can do it with a signal. And the signal's a lot easier and it's hard to detect. But a lot of people, a lot of old school people probably still have chips. So that's another thing that they might want to pay attention to because sometimes they'll be deactivated and other times they can activate through frequency and vibration, just like a virus. Okay, how does one find on their own body, whether or not they have an implant, and how did it get there? Well, chances are um, there's so many different ways that it can get there, depending on their professions, what they've done for a living, if they've had surgery. Um, if it was like me, I didn't need surgery. I had a satellite-driven driven tagging, so I didn't need anything like that. But what I did was I went through a scientist. Um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Steve Colburn. He worked with Dr. Roger Lear. He's also someone who had an implant removed out of his body by Dr. Roger Lear. So he's been doing implant analysis scanning, and he's pretty much the only one right now that's been doing that and, and using certain devices to scan and detect certain signals, signatures, and or implants themselves. So that's been happening. And I don't suppose there's an Intel brand or something to give away who the manufacturer of the chip was. Well, I can tell you that a lot of the chips that were removed were radio frequency. The frequency was um, air traffic control on a lot of them. Um, Some were associated with police departments and some were associated with deep space signals. Our signatures. So um, I do have some of this information on my website. And for anybody who wants to get in touch or thinks they might have implants, um, you can check with Steve Colburn. He's on Facebook. And just can send you, him an email. Can you spell that name again? Sure. It's S-T-E-V-E, Steve Colburn, C-O-L-B-E-R-N. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't always translate well on radio. That's okay. Yeah, no, I'm glad you that. That's fine. And I also have a DVD out that actually has him do the implant analysis on, on the film. And you can see what he's doing. But just so. just give us a ballpark. Like, uh, where can some of these be? Like, inside your wrist, back of your head? Uh, what are we talking about? Yeah, actually, the wrists are, are a good area. Um, I know that some people have had them around their calf, which is kind of strange. Mine are around my skull. The sinus cavity up really high. Um, the chest cavity, I have one in my chest cavity. So that's where most of mine are around my skull, the back of the neck, and my chest. And these were surgically implanted? They were, they were done by satellite-driven technology. 
by yep. satellite. So, so not like a man coming into a room with a no. needle and squirting it into your veins. Exactly. That's the thing that's so intense is that you don't have to go anywhere to be tagged by these programs. I mean, literally, you can be in your own home, in your own bed, and be tagged by these things. So what, what is it? Is it a piece of steel, or what are we talking about here? Um, it's a signal. It's, it's like a radio frequency signal. Um, it's a signature. It's an anomaly. I call it an anomaly signature because I really don't like to classify it as something other than that, but that's what it is. But it's definitely through a radio communication system, which is more uh, what I call more of a, like a zero-point transmission. It's a very high-frequency transmission. Hmm. Okay. And, uh, well, I hope I don't have one. I guess I'm going to have to look into that. I think you'd know if you did. I'll tell you what. You, believe me, if you think something's off, I mean, you'll know. You'll know if you're, if you're plugged into something like this. And you may not activate. I mean, it, say it's dormant. I mean, and then all of a sudden you get activated. That's another thing, too. And believe me, that can happen as well. What kind of things do people do when they're activated? Well, literally, I, I hate to say it, but there's a, an agenda with the cabals that literally they're, they're hunting down and they're targeting for Manchurian candidates. So they will use triggers and keywords to activate their, quote, unquote, soldiers, super soldiers, whatever you want to call them, so that they can commit potential crimes. And that's all programmed by government, covert cabals that program them, but they activate them through certain communication, uh, triggers, keywords, codes, you name it, um, phone calls sometimes, handlers. And, and yours are in and around your head, but they're no longer uh, of service to the people that uh, put them in there. Is that right? Right. Well, literally, I, I, um, I overrode them a long time ago. And like I said, I had to testify in the courtroom back in 2006 against my handler and the parties involved that were involved in my tagging and communication and all that other um, you know, covert assault program that I went through. So literally, I, I'm free of it, quote unquote, but at the same time, I still have the anomaly signatures, but I'm the one in control and I've been in control for a very long time. And I'm, I'm actually a control freak now because I won't allow myself to get taken <laughs> over. It's dangerous. I'm talking with Solaris Blue Raven and she is a certified black belt. We may talk a little bit about that. <laughs> we have okay. already, but, uh, I, w- I noticed on your website something that uh, – and I'm, o- I'm always trying to learn things and I thought I knew what telepathy was. But on your website, you've got a heading synthetic telepathy. So can you just tell everybody what is telepathy and what is synthetic telepathy? Sure. Uh, your synthetic telepathy is your natural psychic ability. It's your natural telepathy that's wired normally with your own electromagnetic field and your four-body system and your higher self, over soul, superconscious, and what I call soul extensions. I mean, when we, are, when we are unified in our consciousness, we have natural telepathy. We just don't use it, and a lot of people have forgotten it. So, you know, a lot of times people call themselves psychic or they get psychic messages. That's part of being telepathic, but there is a whole new, um, there's a whole avenue to that with, with real dialogue of synthetic, or not synthetic, rather, but regular telepathy. Now, with synthetic telepathy, what they'll do is a covert intelligence area in an underground um, black budget program will map the neural circuitry, they map the brainwave activity, they map the psychic centers, they map the four-body system and everything connected to that type of ability and integrate it and and interface it onto their communication system where they can tweak it a little bit and add a life handler in real time so that you have natural telepathy with your life handler and or a machine, which is a communication system based on artificial intelligence. So that's what they're doing and that's anytime they tell you that this stuff isn't real they're full of it this stuff's been going on for a very long time it's it's a headset without a headset um i'm sure it's it's used with only the really really um high profile elite beyond the word that use it but it's definitely there and if you if you research in the military they've been using synthetic telepathy for a very long time they've been experimenting with that also and have had contracts using synthetic telepathy wow Mm. yeah now where does this type of technology and this kind of invasion of, of people that I'm sure a lot of people listening are going, wow, I can't even believe this. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's fine. Uh, where is this circle of technology spinning on the one hand? And then on the other hand, uh, you've got, I would assume, similar interests um, carrying on notions like, hey, let's go to war with Syria. Let's mm-hmm. see if we can invade Iran. Like, where does this kind of technology and invasive programming of, of individuals through implants and and these other uh, horrible applications um, find themselves within the standard imposition of war. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I think they use it a lot on their soldiers and their personnel, quite honestly. I think um, anytime you have synthetic telepathy access, you are a spy bird for other divisions. You can travel to any other country and be a spy. They'll never know it, and they'll never detect it. So um, you can have somebody walk in the room, and they'll be interconnected with their life handler, and they'll be able to assess the whole area and report back. I mean, that's the ultimate spy. So you have that through governments, and I would suspect that it's not just the United States. It's global. It's everywhere, and it's sold to the highest bidder. It's definitely military. So you're dealing with something that's a weapon. And it's, it's not just a non-lethal weapon, by the way. This is a type of thing that can take you down. They can take your life, uh, life right away from you. I mean, literally stop your vitals or whatever it is they need to do remotely. They can kill you remotely very easily with this technology. So that's very, very dangerous in the wrong hands. Um, that's the main thing they're doing for it. You know, when I was first tagged with it, I kept saying, wow, this could be used for astronauts. How cool is that? You know, we could use it. I was thinking the positive things right. the whole time I was being programmed because I'm a very optimistic and enlightened being. But at the same time, that's not their agenda. They don't care. Um, there's no, there's no uh, compassion and understanding. It's all about weaponization. And, and yeah, that's such a, a downer. <laughs> yeah. It's such a negative uh, thought, but uh, what, what kind of positive things would you, would you be able to do, to do with it? I mean, and, and let's say, you know, the money system is a big uh, swizz and we're trying to, people are realizing now that it's all built on a house of cards. They're just printing mm -hmm fake money, and uh, that's designed to, to sort of keep us chasing after uh, something that doesn't really matter. But, mm -hmm. you know, money could be used in a, in a positive way. So what, what positive applications could you imagine if, if uh, let's say, some of the good guys were to gain control of these technologies? Right. And I think there are good guys out there. There has to be. I mean, I'm, I'm, I try to be optimistic about that. I would say space program, that to me is a huge, is a huge thing. Um, you know, just being able to navigate in any universe or star system with the technology would be very beneficial because you don't have to worry about a lot of interference. You know, you just have that natural um, communication system that's already wired in. So I'd say that would be one of the benefits. And I think that um, for healing, perhaps you might be able to assess people better if you can trust your source energy um, without interference from a handler or something like that, I would say it can be used for healing as well. I'm also looking at the idea that, you know, the blind could probably see because you could probably use a technology that would enable them to, to actually see, even if they were blind, through a type of program with an integrated synthetic telepathy program where they could actually assist in visuals and things like that. So I have a, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that it can be tweaked enough to be used in a positive way. It's literally about control and manipulation right now on this timeline, and it seems to me that they don't want to do that. But if we have the majority that come forward and good guys coming forward that say, hey, we want to do this instead and enough of this negative stuff, I think we can, I think we can change that, you know? Yeah, that would be the idea. I mean, that's what, that's right. what we're trying to do in the economic realm. And, uh, and, um, but, you know, there are certain things that seem to have control. You've got um, religion is a very big uh, control mm -hmm. factor. The, these are all um, control structures. Mm -hmm. The money, the religion, and trying to turn it around is uh, obviously not easy to do. Um, no, and, yeah, and mind control is part of religion because it's if you don't do this and do that, then you suffer these consequences. There's no middlemen with spirit. I mean, we all know in higher consciousness there's no religion. It's just a, it's created by man to control and manipulate the masses, and, and they are getting away with it. What concerns me also is that they can use the psychotronic programming to pretend they're the voice of God, and these people would be like, if they're not understanding technology, then they'll think, oh, my, God's talking to me every day, and God told me to do this and do that, and, you know, and then there's mass murders everywhere, you know, and then that's pretty much what's going on. I mean, a deployment of of, of a cyber war. Yeah. I, I never enjoyed going to church as a young boy. I just remember, get up, sit down, get up, sit down, <laughs> kneel, sit down, That's... get up, sit down. I was like, what is going on here? Yeah, Catholic, right? Uh, well, Presbyterian, but they, oh, okay. they, adopted, they adopted a lot of nonsense that, uh, yeah, I never really thought that was anything more than training you how to get up and sit down and get up and sit down. Right. Um, obedience. Obedience. Absolutely. So we, we have that from the um, the the religious uh, leaders. We have that from uh, our political leaders. And mm -hmm. and I guess I'm always fascinated. Wherein does a political leader or a political uh, mover and shaker, shall we say, cross over from, you know, I really want to do something to help my fellow man, and if you elect me, I'm going to make sure that we don't have to go through this kind of stuff. And then eventually they get uh, corrupted into the system where they just go along like a cog in the machine and they change nothing really. And at what point does a politician, say, become aware of 
and let's go with American politicians. What time? When, when do they become aware of something that you're talking about? These applications of invasive technology, or mm-hmm. don't they become aware? Or is there a certain level that you have to attain before you know that stuff? Right. I would say um, I think they're all corrupt to begin with. Honestly, I think they have the potential to be corrupt. And then when they get into the White House, there's CIA involved. CIA is obviously mind control 100%. So, you know, when you have these agencies that have been controlling and, and calling the shots in the United States for a very long time, whenever you get someone indoctrinated into the White House, they're going to have to basically comply with what's going on with that group of people. So I would suspect that they get indoctrinated into more information after they get into the White House, but I don't think they know half the uh, technology that exists, even if they think they have access to black budget I, I don't think they know about anything until they start getting investigators and researchers out and they start hearing whistleblowers and then they start looking at it. And I think that's why whistleblowers are so dangerous is because we're exposing the truth and they don't like that. Um, they want to keep it, you know, quiet. Yeah. Do you think there's anyone involved in these technologies that are dark and heavy who are our double agent? Maybe someone who is working on the inside doing these you know, implants and being involved in this kind of stuff that is working uh, as, a, as a double agent to sort of spin things around? Or, or is there no way for that? Is that just like a black hole and everybody gets sucked into it and that's that? Well, you know, I'd like to say my handler was a double agent. And a lot of people who are handlers in, in association with the synthetic telepathy program or the covert intelligence areas would be, um, you know, classified as that. But at the same time, I think they're being blackmailed. I think they're being blackmail to a point where if they don't comply, um, their families get killed or, or something bad happens. And I think that's where they're getting compromised. It takes a very courageous person to break orbit with these evil people. And, um, you know, when they're threatening you or your family, and I understand that, believe me. I mean, if somebody's trying to kill you or your family, you you probably want to go on to their side. Now, with me, I'm a freedom fighter, and I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Um, but a lot of other people would probably get, you know, manipulated by that. So I'd say that there are quite a few out there, but I think there's a breaking point. You have to ask yourself, you know, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't at this point with these guys. So it's kind of like if you're a good person and even if you're a double agent, I think on this timeline right now, we're, we were in a situation where we need to really redefine the boundaries of what's happening across the globe. And I think that the double agents who are doing the good fight need to come forward. That's my own take. Okay. Well, that's a plea for any double agents listening, and I'm sure you are. (laughs) Once again, if you miss the show, you can contact your local chapter of the NSA. They'll be happy to play it back for you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's let's move on to some uh, uh, another uh, uh, aspect of your website, Program by Deception. That's a book of yours. What's mm-hmm. what's in your book? Okay. Well, Program by Deception was written about um, basically what I went through with the covert assault program, but also it comes out with how people have been manipulated and lied to since the beginning of time. And I think I touched on this a little bit through the interview, but literally since they've been born, since they they entered onto this earth, they have been basically shown information that's based on a lie and a false collective of data. Throughout history, we've had censorship um, from everything from, you know, biblical archives to whatever, whatever beings or, or species were here originally. I mean, all of this data has been wiped out, censored, or stolen. So basically that book is a reminder to people of what's really happening and that you can't trust the data you've been subjected to especially with kids who are going to school nowadays and even people who go to college and get these great degrees i mean they're not being told the truth um a scientist can get a a, you know a phd in physics in a mainstream you know scholastic education but they're not going to know a thing because they're not teaching them the correct data it's all been censored and i think the biggest thing for people to do is start using discernment and letting go of these these false realities what i call false realities based on no truth and no no connection to any universe or star system or us as a species do you think that's a little more difficult to do now that everybody that's going to school is spending time on a smartphone incessantly? Oh, gosh. Yeah, I think it's really sad because you see society getting condition, conditioned into being, you know, accommodating to technology, which, you know, technology can be used for good and evil. We all know that. But at the same time, I think they're losing something uh, along the way. They're losing part of their spiritual essence, their soul essence. You know, I grew up without all that. I grew up with a regular old typewriter and no cell phone, you know. My mom... Mom, I'm telling me to come in the house with my cell phone. You know what I mean? We didn't go. We didn't grow up with technology, and I think that sometimes people get too wrapped up in that. And right now, it's like everybody's got an iPhone stuck to their head, and you know, for, they're they're conditioned for synthetic telepathy. I'll tell you what, it sounds really good. 
but when you start getting interfaced with a communication system and then all of a sudden you realize that you cannot think for yourself or you cannot see things without somebody labeling them for you or you're getting controlled and manipulated and if you decide you want to do something else, it will tell you you can't. That's where we're heading if, if people don't pay attention with this technology. Yeah. And uh, again, it's the the bankers, the um, the religious leaders there. And you mentioned mm-hmm. earlier the cabals. Am I, am I in the right zone? When, yep, is that absolutely. what you're talking about? Yes. Yes, you are. And those are families. Is that right? A lot of them are families and then the minions, what I call the minions, those who work for the families, those who cover up the crime. And then, of course, you have these agencies who are, like I said, like CIA and, you know, NSA, you know, they can go on and on with all the different divisions we have. We have so many, it's ridiculous. But they're all connected into the mind control. And it's all about control and manipulation. I mean, they're working for their masters. And they're so programmed, they can't break orbit with the fact that they're doing something wrong. And it's not for the benefit of anybody on this world, not even for them. Well, who is it for the benefit of then? It's, it's really, you know, I think in their sick little twisted brainwashed minds, I think they're thinking somehow they're going to be the only elite cabal left when they do this cross, you know, this, this mass extermination, which I, I really feel that they're trying to do. I think they really want to um, depopulate, you know, the people on this world. And I think that eventually they just want to play king and just be, you know, with, sit there with a, a small group of people, but it's going to backfire. And I can see that ahead of time. So I know that it's not going to work out the way they want it to, but that's their agenda. And, you know, you can't rationalize with madmen. No, I didn't. In, yeah, I didn't want ahead. to believe anything like that. But, uh, you know, it dawned on me several years ago that the folks mm-hmm. that are in control of all of this type of thing, there's only so much money that you can have or spend right. or use. And, uh, you know, beyond that, I mean, and then they can just print it up anyway with quantitative easing. And I mean, you know, what's the point? You know, right. there must be some kind of desire that transcends you know, the the great American dream and, oh, we got to get rich and I want to be rich and you want to be rich. And the folks that are running things are already so painfully rich and they can't possibly uh, need more than what they already have. So I'm always trying to find out what is it that is driving them to, right. to continue to do this. Yeah, and they get bored. I think I think when they have that much money that people just get plain bored. And it's experimentation. They want to play God. You know, you've heard of transhumanism, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. That's all about man, you know, integrating in with machine. And it's about a new race of, quote, unquote, what they perceive as gods, which really is nothing close to any god. But it's their version. So, I mean, you're literally dealing with people who are so psychotic and so dysfunctional and so programmed that they'll just do anything to appease their own nature and at, at everybody's cost. I mean, we're dealing with everybody's along for the ride and that's just so wrong. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm seeing with what's going on with these cabals and these societies right now. Okay. So beyond, beyond that, you, you don't have any more labels for the cabals the way I just call them cabals. You know, I know people like to call them the Rothschilds and this and that, you know what? They're cabals. They're just a bunch of imbeciles who are overpaid and, um, have made way too much money. And most of the time that they didn't even earn that money, it's been stolen. So, um, yeah, I like to call them that because that pretty much sums it up as far as who they are and what they are. And, and what connection do they have uh, with any, anybody off world? Is there someone off world who is also happy to be uh, benefiting yeah. from this, uh, these measures of control? Well, if you talk to a lot of UFO people, they'll tell you that they're in cahoots with the uh, you know, different species out there, you know, um, reptiles and this and that. I really don't believe that. I believe they're just plain evil people. Now, um, I don't even know if they're Satanists or not, quite honestly. I think they, they worship something that's evil, but literally what it is is them. I mean, literally, they're just evil people, and I believe that they're evil because they're disconnected from source. If they were connected to the universe, if they were connected to these highly evolved beings and off-world species, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing and the misuse of technology, because that's like a universal no-no. Every celestial race out there in higher consciousness knows that they don't misuse technology. There's a protocol in the universe, and they're not, they're not allowing for that here. I mean, so it kind of tells you that it's man trying to play God with the technology he's acquired, and he's doing a very bad job. And making a mess for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, yeah. earlier again, and I love this uh, phrase because uh, I've never coined it, but I, I'm glad that you did because the false premises of society, again, is uh, one of the ones that always strikes me is that, uh, sure, we uh, elect a new president and a new congressman and et cetera, but the structure that they're in and continue to manipulate uh, laws and statutes and rules, that never changes. Like you say, the CIA has been around since uh, 47 and the OSS before that. And, uh, 
you know, that doesn't change. And when the new president comes in and sits down, they open up a few folders and say, OK, here's what you need to know. And then he's eventually going to get through his term or two and move on. And then the next guy comes in like the structure doesn't really seem to change. No. And it's only no. the face. And yet people believe that they're really living a different life under Obama when he seems to be carrying on the same kind of crazy nonsense that, you know, he campaigned against when he was trying to point out Bush's flaws. He's gone further than uh, oh, yeah. Bush, Bush was able to do after saying that he wouldn't. Clinton did the same thing after Bush won. And <laughs> um, and so when you talk about mind control, uh, a lot of this must come from mass media. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, total disinformation. Nobody can trust the mass media. And that's the problem is there are a lot of people who watch that and rely on that for information. And it's nothing based on truth. It's all propaganda. It's all lied. Those guys lies. They're all paid off. I mean, all of these stations are, are paid off so that you're not going to get any truth from them. And if you try to come out with the truth, you're going to get targeted and eventually taken out. Um, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of really good investigators wind up disappearing if they're really that good. So, yeah, it's a corrupt system. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit. And it needs to go. And that goes for the entire structure of our, of our country. I mean, our government in the United States right now, it never worked. I don't believe it really ever did. I think it's always been corrupted and it really just needs a, a complete clearing. I mean, a house clearing inside the White House. And I, I honestly believe that Obama has done a horrible job. I mean, he has been so dangerous with what he has with his executive orders and his it's like a child in a candy store i mean he just keeps going after stuff and it's just like talk about somebody who has such ego there's no comprehension of what's really happening i mean he's literally so programmed that guy and i've watched him for a good amount of time now and it's just really uh disconcerting to see this kind of thing happening in this country because it certainly feels like they're goose stepping here in the u.s let me tell you Right. So before we uh, wrap things up, let me get your take on the Edward Snowden reveals horrible things the NSA is doing situation. Right. Um, well, yeah. If if they are able to, if the if the um, the technologies that are able to be employed uh, that can actually terminate someone from afar, mm-hmm. um, but Ed apparently is still alive, and so then there's the whole question: Is the information that he is releasing? all that much of a shocker anyway when most of it was available before he started talking about it. Do they want him still alive? I mean, it seems like if they really wanted to get rid of him with the technology that you mentioned, they would have been able to do that. I agree with that. And I wondered if he wasn't a double agent because honestly, everybody, anybody who's been paying attention knows the NSA has been tracking people for a very long time. Everything he's brought up has been no new news whatsoever insofar as as how that whole area functions. But I will tell you that the fact that they're acquiring the data like they are and the way they store the data, everybody's phone conversation, you know, literally they're taking so much data. And I will tell you that they are able to psychotronically harass somebody with that data later on. So someday down the road, if somebody gets targeted with a communication system where they're hearing some, uh, you know, mock radio signal communication, aka voices, right? They'll start saying, oh, you're this, 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 and this. And then they'll start saying stuff that they have done. And they'll think, wow, how do they know that? Well, guess what? NSA knows a lot of things when they're spying on people. So just, to, just for people to have a heads up, the technology of psychotronic programming, I'm sure they will use and deploy on the masses when they feel like it. Mm, well, on that rosy note. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's okay. I want to get the truth, not necessarily the happy stuff. But, right. um, yeah, that, that's uh, fantastic. Listen, um, I want to know, I want to tell everybody listening right now, that uh, you also are a broadcaster, and where can people hear your show, and when does it air? Hey, um, I actually host Raven Star's Witching Hour, and that's on every Saturday at uh, 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time through Revolution Radio. Revolution Radio yep. on the Internet. Okay, everybody, that's great. Uh, well, that's fantastic. Thank you for coming on. I hope you My will pleasure. do so again sometime. Love to, Alan. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening to Conspiracy Queries with Alan Park. Please offer comments or complaints by emailing conspiracyqueries at gmail.com or on Twitter at con underscore queries or at our website, conspiracyqueries.com. Thanks for listening.